Everywhere you look in the 3D space, everything's about dragons right now. But if you're curious, we don't want to just 3D print a dragon. You want to make your own dragon. So let's load one up on the printer and see exactly what it takes to make one of these. Now my contacts at FL Sun sent me some filament so I could throw it up on the T1 Pro and print one of these guys out. And luckily, I didn't have to look long before I was inundated by an entire page of dragons to choose from. So let's go ahead and throw one of those in the T1 Pro and see exactly how it works. So here we have our dragon, but exactly how does this Flexi Boy work? Well, this isn't something I would refer to as joints or connecting arms or anything like that. I like to refer to this as captive geometry. And if you're curious on how to make your own captive geometry, we can hop over to Blender and show you how this works. Now that we're in Blender, there's a few different ways that we can create captive geometry. Some are better than others. The first one I'm going to show you is by far the easiest to do, but it's not the strongest. But I'll show you anyways in case you just want to do something quick and dirty. We're going to start out with a simple 20 by 20 millimeter cube. And what I'm going to do is duplicate this item so we can create an object that we can print that will have captive geometry. Keep in mind, this video is a continuation of the Blender series. If you haven't watched the first video on how to use Blender for 3D modeling, make sure you go back and watch that first, as everything in here will be set up using the same profiles that we use in that tutorial. The first way we're going to create our captive geometry is easily the quickest and dirtiest way to do it. To do this, we just hit Shift A, hover over Mesh, and go to Torus. Now what we want to do is hit S and simply scale this down. We'll switch our planes right here, and then we'll hit R to rotate, and then hold Control as you rotate, and then that will snap it to degrees. We'll go back to our Y plane right here, and we'll drag this up to center it on the grid. Hit S again, and scale it down. Now what we want to do is take the center of this torus and drop it over the edge of this square right here, or this cube. And you can see that the center is over the cube right here, but it's not intersecting with the next cube. That's very important that there's a break in between this torus and the next cube. Well, we want it intersecting in the first cube. Now from here, all we're going to do is Control C to copy that and Control V to paste that. We'll click on that torus by itself, and then we'll go to the X plane, and we'll hit R to rotate. Again, hold control as you rotate so it snaps to the degrees. We'll go back to our Y plane, and what we're going to do is hit R again to rotate, hold control, and then we're going to shift this up until it's about a 40 degree angle. If you look up here into the transform window, you'll notice as we hit R and we hold control, you'll see the degrees change. The rule of thumb is anything above a 30 degree is generally safe for 3D printing. 40 degrees and you're relatively considered always safe. Once we have this at a 40 degree angle, we can simply drag this over here and drop it down. What we're trying to achieve here is we want it coming from the inside of this cube, but we don't want it interconnecting into this cube. But you see here, we have an issue. We need to adjust the intersections of these objects. Now you can see that I've brought it down. If I go over here to shader modes and change my shader mode, they're coming out of both objects, but the rings aren't exactly touching. The toruses are completely independent of each other. This gives us our captive geometry that we could print, support free, easy, quick, and dirty. Now all I have to do is copy this geometry to my other cubes, and I'm able to print this and illustrate exactly what's happening. At this stage, all I'm going to do is select these two objects and hit Control J to join them into a single object. Then I'll go up here to Object, Set Origin, Origin to Geometry. That will center our control selector to the center of the geometry. Now we can simply copy and paste this and put it in between our cubes. Now we have our little snake or worm or whatever it is, but how about I just go ahead and throw some feet or something on it and I'll toss it off to the printer so we can see what it looks like. Now we have our quick and dirty little worm here or whatever it is, but you can see that this quick and dirty geometry trick 
does the job just fine, but there's a few problems with it. The primary issue with using this form of captive geometry is it's not very strong and you could break it incredibly easy. Just like that, the whole part's wasted and the design doesn't mean nothing if it's not connected in the first place. Now, I could easily break this little guy that I threw together in five minutes, but I won't because he's, uh, I don't know, kind of cute. Before we move on to the next method, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. Whether you need help with 3D printing or more advanced manufacturing, PCBWay has you covered. Not only 3D printing, but their site offers a wide range of services from sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining, and even custom PCB manufacturing. And their 3D printing services go beyond the average capabilities of your at-home 3D printing. Services like mass SLA production, as well as metal 3D printed parts like titanium and aluminum. So if you have a project or need help having something manufactured, make sure to check out PCBWay at PCBWay.com. Now, there are a thousand different ways to do this using Blender and arguably far better ways of doing it. But the primary purpose of this video is to illustrate the way captive geometry works. An easy way to visualize this concept is just two interlooped rings, much like our concept before. But the difference is we just want to make two sets of geometry that aren't intersecting, but are also interposed to each other, but we cannot allow them to pass through each other. This is the basic foundation of something like captive geometry. Now that we're down to just two cubes, why don't we go ahead and I can show you the second option for creating captive geometry. For this option, we don't need our cubes this far apart, so we can go ahead and grab them, and we just want about two millimeter worth of spacing in between our two cubes. The next thing we're going to do is shift A and then add a cylinder. Now this cylinder will go ahead and scale down until we're right about there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this center to the front of the second cube right here, where it's overlapping this one just a little bit, but not quite centered. Now, let's go back to our Y plane. Then we'll select this part, Control C, Control V to copy paste. We'll make sure we have the second cylinder selected, and then we'll just scale it in a little bit. And we can go back to our Z plane, see exactly how much we're cutting out. And right here, we should be good. Now we'll go back to our Y plane, go into edit mode and make sure that our edges for top and bottom extend far outside so we can use it as our Boolean cut. Now we'll select this object, hit space, type in Boolean, then go down here and then select this. Once that's selected, let's go ahead and create a new collection and call it cuts. And then drag this into our cuts collection and hide it. Now we have a punch through for this part right here, but we need to add just one more Boolean to that part. To do this, we're going to add another cube. And once we have the cube, we'll go ahead and scale it down. Next, we'll hit R for rotate, hold control, and then rotate it until we're at a 45 degree angle. And we want this to intersect right here at the bottom and then extending out past the front of this cylinder. Now we can select our cylinder, hit space, add Boolean, and use this cube for the Boolean cut on this cylinder. Now we can just take this and drop it into our cuts folder. The other thing we want to do is make sure that this isn't too thick on its height. So we can come in here, hit tab, and pull this top down just a little bit. And this should be all we have to do for this part right here. Next, we need to make a socket so this part doesn't intersect into this. Hitting Shift A, we'll go into our meshes and add a UV sphere. And what we're going to do is scale it down and use this as our socket point for this cube. All we want to do is make sure the top right here and the bottom are about a millimeter inside of the cube itself. Now we can use this as our cut point for this cube. We just need to make sure that this center line is on this front leading edge of our cube. Now we can go ahead and add our Boolean modifier. And again, we'll just go ahead and throw this into our cuts. 
The last thing we're going to do to make this a functional print and place part is to add a cylinder. So let's go in here and add a cylinder and then scale this down. Going to our Z plane, we could look right here and center that into the center of our cylinder that we made before. And we'll put this at about three millimeters right here into the center. Next, we wanna to go to our Y plane and then center that in the center of our cube on its horizontal axis. Then we'll come into here into edit mode and we'll grab that bottom edge and pull it down. And then we'll come in here and pull our top edge down. But now let me show you a tool that we haven't talked about yet. We can go in here and hit tab again to go in edit mode and then zoom in right here on the top. What I'm gonna do is make sure my snapping is turned on and then hold shift and right click. And I want this cursor here to be as close to this corner as possible. Once it is, go over here to the spin tool, but this isn't going to work. We need to make sure that it is set to the Y axis. And then we'll use this bottom right here and we can actually extrude at an angle. Now, what we're going to do is hold control when you extrude and you'll see that it snaps to our angles. So we'll snap it right here and then we'll come out once we've done that and hit E to extrude the rest of that top edge. Now, everything's working except the top and bottom of this are sticking outside of our cube here. So we'll go ahead and use our cube to apply a modifier to this. And now we can go ahead and apply this modifier so we can grab and select all this to delete it. This should be everything that we need for our captive geometry. Now, normally I wouldn't do this, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and apply all the modifiers just so I can quickly copy and paste this over and over again to get on with the rest of the video. Overall, I would say that this turned out pretty good. And unlike the one that we used before where it had the simple rings that broke easily, this one is a lot stronger and I could twist it and apply pressure to it and it won't break exactly easy. Now, if I wanted to, I could sit here and snap it in half, but that could be said about this as well. The goal of this video wasn't to design anything super fancy or exciting or even aesthetically pleasing. The goal was to simply illustrate the concept behind print in place objects like this that required no supports. There are countless different methods to achieve this end result but the two that I've shown in this video are by far the simplest of those methods. There are way more advanced options that you could do in the future once you get more comfortable with 3D modeling in general. But if you're just starting out, these two methods are a great place to start when you're setting up your first designs. And you don't have to do things exactly how I've shown you in the video. You can take this concept and tweak it and really do whatever works best for your design. But in the end of it, it's not that complicated as long as you understand the basic concept of it.